Hello. We are meeting again today to discuss mirror therapy for upper limb or hand so that we can trick the brain into thinking that our weak hand is moving but actually it's the movement of the good hand in front of the mirror. In order to do this, the mirror neurons, as they are called in the brain, tend to think by visual stimulation of the mirror that the good hand is moving and simultaneously the weak hand is also moving. But in order to do this, we need to have a few prerequisites. For example, the person should be able to follow instructions properly. Second, the attention span of the person should be good because it requires some patience. And finally, some basic movements of the hand should be already present. A completely stiff or tight hand is not what mirror therapy works on. In order to perform mirror therapy, it is important for the person to be sitting in an upright posture. Secondly, the mirror, which is a lengthwise mirror, has to be placed usually in the mid sagittal plane. That is a plane in which you will feel once you place your hands, that both your hands are moving simultaneously. First, the movements that we can practice in front of the mirror include keeping your arm extended, your elbow extended, palm up and down. Then the same movement with your elbow bent. Moving your elbow inwards and outwards like a swiping movement on the table. Moving your wrist forward and backward, keeping it sideways and then keeping your palm down. Fisting and unfisting of your hand. Touching your thumb with each finger. And finally, keeping your thumb steady on the table, trying to drum your fingers. This also helps in creating a dissociation between your thumb and your fingers and also creating individual movement of the fingers. It has been postulated that just doing individual movements really does not give you a purpose. So try practicing with objects. It's good to practice making different kind of grasps with your hand, using a small ball to use a spherical grasp, to make a hook grasp, keeping your thumb out and just your fingers working, Use of a cylindrical grasp using a pencil which can also facilitate movement of the forearm, palm up and palm down. And finally, trying to use a disc-like object to practice a span grasp. As far as fine movements go, there are a number of activities that you can perform. For example, you can use a basket and try to move it upside down in front of a mirror. Trying to attach some clips on it for practice of both coordination and finger strength. In this case, you can use thumb and individual finger and also in removing them, thumb against each finger. Also, a bead-like activity can be performed where beads are placed on a specific target, not just anywhere. And so it helps in improving coordination also and then removing them, which also requires stabilization in the hand. Placing some cards on the table to facilitate turning them upside down, like turning pages of the book on both on either side. Using a cloth to try to do sweeping movements of the table to facilitate elbow and wrist movements. Trying to take scoops and doing a coordination activity while looking in the mirror as if your weak hand is doing it. There are four main things about mirror therapy that I really want emphasized. First, there is a misconception that mirror therapy only works maybe in the acute or the subacute phase, but it can well go in the chronic phase. Secondly, in order to instruct the person, it is not necessary that you have to give verbal instructions. 
visual cards, demonstrations, written instructions, anything that the person follows easily can be used. Thirdly, always, always looks for signs like dizziness, nausea, vomiting, or any kind of tiredness or fatigue that the person might feel because it's really not going to help if the person does feel tired and it's better to stop at that time. And finally, try to attempt the movements with the weak hand, maybe simultaneously while the hand is behind the mirror or immediately following it so that you can actually see how much the brain has been tricked eventually. Also, it's better to practice at least half an hour a day. That is really effective. So let me know how useful these exercises were for you. Was it informative? Please leave it in the comments below and let me know if any other video would like to be covered in neurorehabilitation and we will meet again.